Hi, I'm Eric the Car Guy, and this is Scott Armstrong of Armstrong Automotive. How are, How are you, Scott? I'm good. Good. first. I'm sorry. Anyway, Scott has been kind enough to have me out of his shop so that I could change the tires on my Element here, and he's gonna. Well, actually, the two of us, because he's kind of particular about his shop stuff. We're both going to walk you through just the basic steps on how to change a tire, but let's not take this too seriously because, let's face it, there's lots of different tires out there and there's lots of different things that come up when you're changing tires, so this won't cover everything, but just the basics. So first we start by taking the tires off the car, which we have, and also removing the valve stem cores. Some people just like take the valve uh, stem removal tool and just rip the valves right out of the tires or the wheels. Not my style. Air's out of the tire. We're going to go over to the tire machine and start pushing buttons and stuff like that. Follow him. This is a tire machine. You uh, may have seen them in stores that do tire kind of stuff. And here's my tire. And what we need to do first is get the tire off the bead. Like I said, we need to get the air out of it. And what this arm does is it comes in between the rim and the tire and squeezes it to take the tire off the bead. So this is called breaking the bead. Scott will demonstrate. He's going to step on this pedal. Right there. See? Squishy. And this is for, uh, we'll go over the rest of this stuff later. Do it, man. Ugh. And then you gotta flip around and break the other side because the bead's on both sides of the tire. Now that's all loose, we can take the tire off the wheel. Yay! Before you put this up on here, show me what it does. Like, when you step on this pedal right here in the middle, it does this. It locks the tire in place. It's kind of cool. So that's what we're doing. Now the tire's on here pretty firmly, it's not going anywhere. Then we get the special arm to come down. And if you don't get this on here quite right, it might scratch up the wheels. So this part's kind of important. And then if you have any wheel balance weights, now's a good time to take them off. Because if not, they get caught inside here and start scratching the heck out of the outside of the wheel. What do you call that? What do you call that? Like a pry bar or a spud bar? Or? I would just call it a pry bar. Okay, it's a pry bar. Push the pry bar down. And then push the other pedal that makes the whole thing spin around so that the tire comes off the rim. You only need to get it started with the bar. Now this part, at least for me, is it tricky for you? It's tricky for me to get this part sometimes, but he just did it with ease. Anyway, could you do that again? So I can get the whole thing in the shot? Because for some reason, getting the bottom beat up sometimes can be a real pain. But you just reach down under the back and pry up and do the same thing as you did before. The tire is now removed. But look what we have here. We've been dealing with this with the other three wheels. There's all this corrosion on this wheel. And this is really, really super common with aluminum wheels. And if you don't clean this off, the tire won't seal properly. You can use many different methods, but whatever method you choose, get rid of this stuff before you mount the new tire. You're going to take it off the wheel. Yay! This is the method that Scott is using. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Scott is going to employ the angle die grinder. Ah, yes. And also he's using safety glasses, which is an excellent idea. Angle die grinder, roll lock disc on the outside, or sometimes I use a wire wheel on a bench grinder. Doesn't really matter so long as you do this and you don't use a bead sealer because that's a hack way of doing it. All right, this is our finished product. Now the tire will seat up, the bead will seat up against real nice. But we've got one more thing to deal with and that's the valve stem. It's normally a good idea to replace the valve stems whenever you replace tires because, heck, it's right here. Why not do it now? Now if there's TPMS sensors or things like that, especially when you're removing the tire, it's definitely something to be careful of because they can be pretty expensive. So be careful when you're taking these things on and off because you don't want to break those. But these just, Rubber valve stems like this, pretty common, fairly easy to deal with. Um, Scott is going to just use a razor blade, just cut the bottom of it off. 
and then once that's gone, it very easily just pulls out the top, and we get a new one. Use a special valve stem tool to screws onto the top of it. Well, you could do it that way. You could do it the way the, t the tool is designed to be used. <sighs> they didn't ask me when they built it. I, you know, all right. Well, let me just show them how, that, how you normally use that, though. The way you would normally use this, since Scott is such a brute, the way you can normally use this is once you've got this down on, on the top of the valve stem itself, is you can just use the leverage and just leverage it against the end of the wheel, and it'll open up, pull it up through there. And now, Scott is being preemptive by removing the valve stem core because it's going to be a lot easier to put air in this and seat the bead without the valve stem inside the or the Schrader valve, I should say. Now we're going for lubricants. How I always say everything goes better to, goes together better with lubricants. There's all kinds of stuff you can use for this. I'm not really sure what kind of spray Scott has here, but I've seen soapy water. I've seen just like some kind of waxy goo. And once again, Scott just pushed that tire on there. You can use this arm like he's about to bead this top part here, but sometimes you can just push a tire onto a wheel like this. It's, pretty easy. Low profile stuff doesn't work this way so much. Something I forgot to mention real quick here is about directional tires. Uh, there are some tires that have arrows on them that there's a certain direction that they need to be mounted in. Uh, be sure to note that before you uh, install the tires on the wheel uh, because you want to have two going in one direction and two going in the opposite direction in order to have a complete set. So if you have directional tires, make sure you mount them in the correct orientation so that when they get on the vehicle, they uh, spin correctly. We have now officially mounted the tire. There's a couple. Now, something I want to show you here is Scott is really cool that he lined up this paint dot here. When they make a tire, the rubber isn't all even all the way around the outside of it. There might be like a little more rubber over here and a little more rubber over here, and that would affect the balance. So what they do is they mark a spot on the tire that's closest to the valve stem that they feel is the optimum place to mount the tire. Do you have to do it that way? No, but it's kind of cool if you do. And there's, before Scott like makes a bunch of noise, there's uh, jets of air up under here that can shoot up in between the rim and the tire to help it seat because if it doesn't seat, the air is just gonna come out here. So when you first step on the pedal over here where Scott is, it just puts a little bit of air into the tire, but when you push it down harder, there's a blast of air that goes up through here that seats it, like you just did there. And now he'll keep putting air in the tire, eventually this bead will pop. Meaning it will just seat on the wheel. And now comes the fun part because you're going to need to install the Schrader valve into the valve stem after you take it out while air is rushing out. Now, it's really funny when you go to do this and the Schrader valve blows out someplace in the shop underneath something where you can't find it, which is why we keep extras. And now the tire is sealed. It's going to set the pressure. Somewhere around 32. How's it going, Scott? Going well. Is this your first tire that you've mounted? Uh, not even the first one today. Oh, I see. Admittedly, Scott was uh, assisting me in putting the, the other tires on. Why? Because he's so darn skilled. I usually wait until it's inflated to take the tire stickers off because I think it's easier, but you know, that's up to you. But do take them off. If not, as you drive down the road, you'll have some very odd noises. To the balance machine. Now Scott has the fanciest, coolest balance machine that I've ever seen. Unfortunately, it's so cool I don't know how to use it. So you mount the, the wheel and tire onto the balance machine. And you might think this is a very complicated process, but all he did was shut the hood and it spins the wheel, checks to see where the high and low spots are, or where the wheel needs weights and then it'll tell you up here where to put them and it'll tell you exactly how much to put in and these over here are the wheel weights these are the things that you hammer on the outside of the tire to give it that balance if you don't do this you'll get a vibration while you're driving at speed usually around 55 or 60 miles an hour 
The other thing we might have missed is the center cap had to come out in order for this to be mounted on here. And one last thing I'll mention is Scott is way cool in that he has the weights that actually fit on Honda wheels. For some reason, Honda made wheels that are difficult to put any other weights on besides the ones that are made to fit Honda wheels. Am I right on this? You are right on that. So uh, it's really good that he has these because if not, what will happen is as soon as you drive away from the tire store, you'll hear like this ka-chink against the inside of your fender, and that's usually the wheel weights leaving. Shortly after that is when you uh, find out that uh, you have that vibration I talked about. Lastly, I'll talk about these stick weights, which for those really special wheels that you can't mount a uh, weight to the outside of the wheel because you know you want to keep it pretty these are stuck up into the inside of the wheel in here to do the exact same thing as the stuff that you hammer on the outside it's a little bit trickier to do these but the way this machine is set up it's set up to try to show you exactly where to place things and exactly how much to, to put on there all you do right here is line up in the green arrows you'll take and go exactly 12 o'clock on the wheel That'll tell you exactly where the wheel weight needs to be. So if I spun that wheel around right now, that green would go away, and I would see something differently? If we turn that, you see it's in the red now. Okay. So we bring that back. We pick the quantity of weight it's telling us to use here. Which, 1.75? 1.75 ounces. So say, for instance, like it told me to put on like six ounces or something like that. Would that make you nervous? If a passenger car tire needed six ounces of weight, you've definitely got an issue that you need to look further into. Yeah, it's probably the tire's bad or something like that. Or you didn't mount it correctly. So the first thing I would do is like dismount it from the balancer and then remount it. And as you can see, there's a special tool that you use to take off weights and hammer them on. And if you don't have the exact weight, you can actually double them up. Looks like you got a 1 and a, one and a 75 here. Correct. Yeah, unfortunately, my solid weights stop at 150. So for easy math, we did it that way, and then we put the one on the inside. So it's spinning the tire and wheel, and it tells you, yay, you're good to go. And that's how you mount and balance the tire. I'd like to thank Scott Armstrong here, out in Fairfield, Ohio, Armstrong Automotive. You know what, I'm gonna put a link in the description to his shop, so in case you wanna learn more about Scott who I used to work with years ago at Acura. Anyway, I'm Eric the Car Guy. You can always find me at ericthecarguy.com where you can ask your automotive questions. Just type in a couple of keywords to the search function and something should come up. If not, you can sign up for a forum. It's free. Uh, other than that, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and I close with be safe, have fun, and stay dirty. I'll see you next time. Thank, Thank you. you, Scott. See you.